Contemporary notions of transformational leadership identify humility as a vital element. We asked leaders in development to share their thoughts on this. Yeah, I worked with a colleague in Africa who was the national director of, of a very large program in Africa. Um, now, as a leader, he himself was, was very astute, very charismatic, very capable as an upfront leader. Um, but his, his drive in leadership was around investing in his national staff. You know, he himself was an expatriate, um, but he had that longer term vision. So he, um, he invested a lot of his time in, in nurturing, in guiding and mentoring his national staff um, and his national managers, uh, and then giving them the scope to make decisions on behalf of the organisation. And then he would back those decisions and back those staff in the decisions that, that they're making. Um, and so, you know, for me, he was a, kind of a peak example of an enabling leader. You know, he, he, instead of being the one to lead out the front himself, he wanted his staff and he created the, the dynamics for his own staff and his managers to be the ones out the front making decisions, being seen to make decisions. When there were accomplishments, it was the manager that he was mentoring then that took the credit, that kind of was in the limelight while he was in the background kind of cheering as well. Uh, and so, you know, I think that's, that's a classic example of a leader really showing humility, um, but, you know, interestingly then building their own integrity and their own reputation um, because behind the scenes people can see where the success across the wider office is coming from. I'm currently working in China right now and for Chinese people and East Asian cultures, the idea of humility is one that is very deeply rooted in the culture. And so uh, I really agree with the idea of a leader and a transformational leader being humble and being um, able to devote themselves to others and be of service in that kind of way that shows humility. Um, for example, I was, I was really taken by a principal that I worked with, uh, I volunteered at his school and he started this school when he was 21 in China's poorest province in Guizhou because he saw around him children were getting the education that they need and still 10 years later he's working with the same group of um, you know disadvantaged students, he's living in a tiny tiny house in this school which he found um, the government wouldn't give him enough funds for, for a school, so he found an old factory and that's where his school is. And you can see through his actions that that's, that's what's driving him and it's not, you know, I think in education today or in a lot of areas there are um, awards that you can get or um, platforms that you can share your stories about, um, you know, the work that you've done and obviously that's a good way to advocate and um, communicate all the all the work that is necessary, but in the end, it is these people on the ground who are doing that grassroots work day in, day out, um, and not probably getting enough acclaim or credit for it that um, I really admire, and those are the transformational leaders that will pass on um, their work to the next generation. I think that humility is such an important element when it comes to leadership because I guess the important thing about leadership is not just excelling yourself but it's about making the space for other people to excel and unless you can have humility then you're not really allowing other people the space to thrive. There's a wonderful campaigner that I get to work with on a really big collaborative campaign that we run and I think that he's just a classic example of someone who leads through other people rather than you know leading at the front and charging forwards and his humility is a really big part of that. There, there was a time recently where we, we kind of recognised that he was really struggling to put a gender lens on the work that he was doing. Basically their entire staffing base was male and it you know, it was kind of alarming to us that we that he couldn't see this, and I think a lot of us were a little a little hesitant to raise it with him. And when when we finally sat down with him and said, "Look, you know, this is not the way that we should be working in this space. We should have more women engaged. You can't just have an entire staff base of men." And he was almost embarrassed that he had let that slide, that he had not been able to put a gender lens on the work that he was doing. And the, the transformation that's happened in the way that he's led the team since then has been so significant. More female staff, more female-led um, program work, more female-led storytelling, all of that sort of stuff is completely transformed. So I think that we would never have had that space unless he was able to be humble enough to say, oh, I have made a really big mistake here. Thank you for pointing it out to me. Let's move forward together in a more effective way. Personally, I think humility is critically important to effective leadership. Um, uh, 
this is about how leaders engage with with staff and other stakeholders in their their organisations. Um, uh, if you like, leadership leadership that displays humility tends to work with and through staff and stakeholders within organisations. It's a form of, of leadership that um, provides voice, provides opportunity and provides meaningful input to uh, staff and other stakeholders within an organisation. The opposite of, of humility-based leadership is leadership which is, if you like, sort of personality-based uh, and often very directive and very self-centred and, and ego-driven. The risks of self-centred and ego-driven uh, leadership are well documented in a range of, of you know, business and, and leadership uh, studies in the sense of that style of leadership predisposes organisations to a greater risk of uh, lack of internal challenge and debate uh, as in terms of reaching decisions or developing strategies. It can uh, foster uh, a greater propensity for what you might call groupthink, um, where staff feel that they're, they're not necessarily able to, to constructively challenge or influence decisions affecting them. And it often stifles uh, divergent thinking and innovation. So uh, humility-based leadership, in my view, is, is very important, particularly in development agencies where you're dealing with often complex, rapidly changing contexts where um, you know, nobody has the answer within their own minds generally to how to address complex challenges and the best solutions and the best strategies come from a leadership style that uh, leads with and through others so it harnesses the skills the experiences and, and the views of a range of different stakeholders within an organization rather than being if you like sort of egocentric leadership from the top. Uh, I think that it's very easy for leaders to stand up and want to be noticed and want to have a view on everything and be on the front pages of papers and and in demand from the media but this particular leader has been very focused on outcomes and and the absolutely undying drive to focus on improving health outcomes has not diverted him at all. And I think the other thing that I've seen in Indigenous Affairs is people come out too early to show off their results and you've got to be able to sustain them over a period and be able to look back and incrementally see how you've sustained them and you've led your way through that development. And I think um, it does take some humility because everyone in the country wants to look at this model. Everyone wants to say what's happening there. And it is about leadership. At the end of the day, this one is. And how can we replicate this? Because it is, without a doubt, the model that's improving Aboriginal health in the country. And when everybody wants to promote you, make you look good, look at what you're doing, it's easy to, for some to go on that journey and I think it's harder to have some humility and continue to do what you're doing and do it well. I would say the, the best example, and it is the key example for why I chose this profession, because I was working as a journalist and that was my passion, but I tried the NGO profession uh, when things were a little dangerous back in Pakistan, Afghanistan uh, 10, 12 years ago. And the person that I worked with she was the most humble person imaginable in the world. She had started that NGO from the ground up, uh, literally from the first small project that she got, maybe for a few hundred dollars, funded from some uh, unknown donor. But from that, she built up an entire nonprofit that is doing work in two provinces in Pakistan in some very complex situations, and she's done emergency work. And now they have seven different field offices in those two provinces, and it's a very credible local organization now that partners even with the UN. And the main thing about that woman was that she was very humble, that she showed humility to anybody and everybody, even to the most corrupt government officials, to the most elite donors flying in from Geneva, 
and to the people on ground who we were serving, but we never imagined them as those desperate poor people, but actually those who need our help and as our partners. Because, and that's one of the key things that I learned from her humility, that you don't treat people who might be poor or who are in need as your uh, servants or someone who are dependent on you, but they just need assistance to get back on their feet or they have lived in poverty or they're trapped in the poverty cycle and uh, they're in this poverty trap and we are the ones who are trying to help them get out, get out of it. So we're not some you know, high flouten kind of development uh, persons who should come in with a chip on our shoulders, but we should sit down on the ground with them and learn from them while we do this job. And that's one of the things that really motivated me to become a, to become a development professional, first in Pakistan and then internationally, that you can learn from people who are in distress. You can learn from people who we consider are poor or who are in need of our assistance. Because once you are humble and you have humility in your personality and in your behavior, that's when you can achieve your goals uh, in any NGO or nonprofit.